Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Triple N Media. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. This is Cardiology Seminars brought to you by Triple N Media, where we have more than 170 cardiology lectures on our YouTube channel and you're welcome to watch all of these. The feature presentation is Heart Failure Classification based on ACC AHA guidelines and based on New York Heart Association classification. Most of this applies to the congestive systolic heart failure uh, would also apply to diastolic heart failure. Before I go into the classification of uh, heart failure, I would like to talk about some of the underlying conditions that uh, most often lead to congestive heart failure, that most often leads to heart failure. The most significant of which are coronary artery disease, hypertension, valvular heart disease, chronic kidney disease, and uh, occasionally infiltrative cardiomyopathy or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or it could be totally idiopathic cardiomyopathy. Sometimes we can see cardiomyopathy related to alcohol. The ACC AHA stages of heart failure. The clinical diagnosis of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction is defined as a left ventricular ejection fraction of less than 40%. The ACC AHA guidelines are based on the cardiac structure. So let's take the two extremes, stage A. These are the patients which I talked about in the previous slide, like patients with coronary artery disease, hypertension, valvular heart disease, chronic kidney disease. These are the patients who at the initial stages have no structural changes in the heart mild hypertension, maybe mild coronary artery disease, maybe mild valvular leak, nothing really to affect the structure of the heart. At the other extreme, you have refractory heart failure with uh, severely dilated heart, with myocardial fibrosis, necrosis, or scar formation, along with, uh, in between these two, we have stage B and stage C. So these are important because uh, you may get a question or two on your board exams and you need to know where you need to focus uh, your attention. Stage A and stage D are pretty easy to understand because they are the two extremes uh, of the spectrum. Stage B is a structural heart disease but without signs or symptoms of heart failure. Like you have mild left ventricular hypertrophy but no symptoms or a patient with a mild inferior myocardial infarction with no change in it with very minimal reduction in re ejection fraction and the patient is fully functional after recovering from the myocardial infarction whereas stage c is someone with the structural heart disease with the prior or recurrent heart failure symptoms this is someone who already has heart failure, who has reduced ejection fraction and has had symptoms before or is coming with recurrent symptoms. So this helps you to get a better understanding of where do we stand in the spectrum of this progressively worsening chronic conditions like coronary artery disease, hypertension, chronic kidney disease, valvular heart disease, uh, and cardiomyopathy. Let's look at the New York Heart Association classification, which is based on the functional capacity of the person to perform ordinary activities. If there's no limitation in ordinary activities, that is class one, class one, where there are no symptoms, there are no symptoms while performing ordinary activities. At the other end of the spectrum, class four, we have a person who is unable to perform any physical activity without having symptoms of heart failure, like having shortness of breath with walking from bedroom to the kitchen or walking to the mailbox. So that's class four. People with significantly reduced ejection fraction, significant limitation in their activities. So now let's look at class two and class three. So this is where you work by process of elimination. Class two is uh, slight limitation of physical activities, comfortable at rest, but ordinary physical activity, 
like walking four blocks or climbing a flight of stairs or two may bring on symptoms. Class two. Class three, less than ordinary activity like walking to the parking lot, walking around at home or at work will bring on the shortness of breath. That's class three. Class two is with ordinary physical activity. Class three is less than ordinary physical activity. And class four is unable to perform any physical activity without symptoms. So class one is no limitation of physical activity. Class two is symptoms with ordinary physical activity. Class three is symptoms with less than ordinary physical activity. Class four is unable to perform any physical activity. I hope this has been useful to you. This has been a cardiology seminar brought to you by Triple N Media. And in the next presentation, I'm going to talk about uh, medical management of heart failure, which is a very important topic and we'll touch upon the drugs that we use on a daily basis under ordinary circumstances and also talk about special circumstances where we may use new class of drugs for treating patients with persistent advanced heart failure. Before I conclude, uh, I would like to get you a free copy of my cardiology rounds manual with more than 140 pages of chock full information as how to survive cardiology rounds. You can just send me an email at drnicknickum at gmail.com and please, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is Triple N Media. I am Dr. Nick Nickum from Houston, Texas.